Hi guys, how's it going? Sam from West Metal Rabbits here. Apologize for not posting these past couple of weeks. My computer crapped the bed, but it's back up and running now, so I'm making up for lost time. So today I want to definitely talk about something that's pretty controversial among rabbit raisers, and that is whether or not you should be raising your rabbits in a colony. Now, a couple things right off the bat. This is a very controversial subject. A lot of people have a lot of strong feelings on both sides of the debate. And I think it's fair for me to say where I'm coming from so you can kind of position your opinion based on that, okay? So I am a, I view myself as a professional rabbit breeder. So what does that mean? I am breeding to maintain breed integrity, specifically of the New Zealand's and uh, New Zealand Reds more specifically. And I'm breeding to produce breeding stock and show stock for others. That's my primary purpose for raising rabbits. Obviously, I do that because I care about sustainability and I think people should have rabbits in their backyards. So homesteaders are some of my biggest customers um, and a lot of newbie rabbit people and that's great and I think the New Zealand is a fantastic breed for that and I think that maintaining the New Zealand's breed integrity is really important. Um, so that being said, I'm not a homesteader. I'm not a, you know, backyard DIY kind of guy, although I do do a lot of that obviously but my main purpose in breeding rabbits is for the the breed integrity I'm, I'm a rabbit breeder first and foremost and you know sort of a homesteader second that's not really my main thing and a lot of my uh, viewers on this channel I have a really nice combination of you know backyard people homesteaders I have a lot of commercial rabbit farmers especially in other countries which is really awesome so this is sort of trying to be a, uh, a broad conversation to a lot of different audiences but it's pretty safe to say, in my opinion, especially for beginner, for beginners, there is very few circumstances where I would recommend raising rabbits in a colony. That's not to say that they're not appropriate in some circumstances, and that's not to say that if you're raising rabbits in a colony, you're doing it the wrong way, or you're a bad person. If it's working for you, and you're getting good results, then good for you. Honestly, that's great. I'm not gonna tell you to stop doing it. However, I would strongly discourage beginners, especially, from starting out with a colony. And I do have some criticisms of the colony style raising in a lot of situations. Not everyone, but a lot. So, before we get into this, we need to define what raising rabbits in a colony is and what a colony is. So, and that's, that's part of the problem is there's a lot of different definitions, but fundamentally raising rabbits in a colony means raising them on the ground and raising more than one rabbit in that enclosure, in many cases, mixing bucks and does and even rabbits at different ages. So, I have a lot of experience raising rabbits. I've done a lot of different methods. And to me, this style of raising poses a lot of issues. But there's also a lot of variations on it. Sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's inside, sometimes it's in an enclosure with a solid bottom, sometimes it's on the bare dirt. So I'm not gonna be able to cover everything. I'm just gonna be able to cover, you know, sort of the basics of why I, I see some problems with this, uh, this style of raising rabbits. So right off the bat, I hear a lot of things, you know, it's, it's more natural and this is what rabbits do in the wild and this, that, and the other thing. And I think it's really important to make a distinction that the rabbits that you are raising, that I'm raising, that we are raising are not wild rabbits. They are hundreds of generations removed from wild rabbits and they do not share many of the instinctive genetics that wild rabbits do. And number two, when we raise animals domestically, I think it's great to take inspiration from the wild. I'm a huge fan of permaculture, but we have to remember, we're not in the business that Mother Nature is. Mother Nature is in the business of keeping the species going at whatever cost. We're in the business of producing food for humans as efficiently and sustainably and ethically as possible. Now those two goals don't necessarily always line up. So the first problem I see is that I hear all the time that rabbits are social in the wild. And while it's true rabbits in the wild do live in warrens, that doesn't mean that these warrens are happy rabbit utopia. In the, in the wild, rabbits have a strict hierarchy and they're very territorial, especially the does. In my situation, I've even seen siblings kill each other or rip each other to pieces or do serious damage to each other, to say nothing of unrelated rabbits, especially when you're introducing new rabbits. So a lot of times does will castrate bucks that they don't like, bucks will try to castrate each other. Does in the wild will actually bully other does so much that they cause them to go infertile because in the wild rabbits are self-regulating population and those does will pick on the lower dominance does just like the bucks will and they can actually drive them so crazy that they don't reproduce they just become infertile 
um, you know, they can cause physical damage, and there can be all kinds of nasty fights. Now, as I said, these are domestic rabbits. If you're doing a good job breeding, or you got them from a reputable breeder, hopefully they're not that aggressive. But you'll still get some from time to time, and things can happen. And it's in a colony situation that's unpredictable. And this dovetails nicely into my second point here in talking about sustainability. I think sustainability and ethics, they can sometimes compete a little with each other. You know, colonies look great on YouTube. They look really nice and peaceful and the rabbits are all hopping around happy and it's a beautiful thing. But the reality is I'm not 100% sold on a lot of the, the furthest, you know, woo-woo permaculture type stuff. I love permaculture, don't get me wrong. But that doesn't mean you should toss out the benefits of modern farming. In my opinion, if you have rabbits that are in a colony that have all the space and they're spending all day fighting running chasing each other around trying to breed with each other you know they're wasting valuable calories that could be being converted into meat and the reality is in this world there's opportunity costs so even if you're not feeding a commercial pellet but especially if you are that feed could be being used more efficiently which means that that energy is effectively being wasted and you know you're sort of getting this this wasted feed basically and wasted feed is you know wasted land it's wasted resources and it just doesn't actually come out on the side of sustainability there on the similar note one of the biggest pet peeves i have about colonies is when i see them on perfectly good land in temperate climates if you're in the high desert and you're in a very dry area and you want to raise your rabbits on the ground i see no problem with it but if you're in a temperate climate like this where that land can be converted into a garden or can be converted into beautiful pasture or used for recreation and you let rabbits go in there, rabbits are incredibly destructive to the ground. I mean, look at what they've done in Australia and even what they do in their native habitats. They are not like a groundhog that digs one hole. They dig dozens and hundreds and I don't care what you say, I have never seen a colony where rabbits stay in one spot and there's grass. Instead, you get bare dirt, a bunch of holes, wasted pasture it makes so much more sense to me to keep those rabbits in your garage and then use that manure on that space to make a garden or more pasture or grow more rabbit food it just doesn't seem that sustainable use of land and this is where i'm talking about sustainability and ethics kind of compete with each other because yes giving the rabbits as much space as they have and letting them uh, exhibit as many natural behaviors as they can is very ethical but you begin to run up against some sustainability concerns especially at a large scale you know, I try to balance that with my cages. I make them taller than standard cages so they can stand up. You know, I do double the space requirements typically, and I do a hybrid model. I raise my grow outs, the ones that are gonna be meat. I raise those out in a tractor where they can harvest green grass and they move to fresh pastures every day, which is again, not a natural thing for rabbits to do in the wild. Rabbits aren't nomadic. You know, they live in close warrens and the fact that they die every other week from an animal or disease keeps the grass regenerating. Which brings me to my third point. When you're raising in a colony, you're really playing with fire as far as the disease perspective, you know, goes. And again, if you're more of a homesteader, you're probably not as aware of what's going on in the rabbit world as some of the, the more, you know, professional rabbit breeders are. But rabbit um, hemorrhage disease, I may be mixing that up, but basically it's a disease that's common in native Europe, uh, has landed in the U.S., it's spreading through wild rabbit populations, and its mortality is like 99%. And if you have rabbits on the ground and they're all together and one wild rabbit that is carrying this disease comes in contact with them, your whole colony is going to be wiped out in a day or two. You won't even know what happens. And that doesn't even talk about the other common diseases that animal has. I mean, animals carry in the wild. You've got ticks, you've got fleas, you've got parasites that the rabbits have when they're on the ground in contact with their own manure. You know, and then on top of that, you have your entire colony of rabbits, your entire herd in one spot so it can spread freely amongst them. Now, again, in nature, rabbits live together and nature does a great job of producing really tough rabbits. But have you ever eaten a wild rabbit? It's a skinny, mangy little thing that's barely alive and is lucky if it makes it three years, which again is not what we're looking for in a sustainable meat production type situation. And the, disease, the, the risk there of the disease is just so much higher, especially if they're outside on the ground. You know, it's less so in a barn, but even if you're in a barn, you're also increasing your manual labor by a huge amount. You have to constantly be moving that manure out of there at least every week, or you're gonna have serious disease problems. And again, I tend to not think that's sustainable because you're creating more work for yourself when you could be doing more useful things, more productive things, you know, growing more food. 
And if you want to do that, that's totally fine. But I just don't think it's the most sustainable path. And I definitely don't think it's a good road for beginners. On a similar note, again, if you're in an outside area, you're gonna have predator problems. If you're in an urban area, dogs are a nightmare. If you're in a rural area, you've got coyotes. I've seen raccoons reach into cages and pull babies' arms off. Possums will even eat baby rabbits. So, you know, you're basically advertising, hey, look, I have this giant buffet of rabbits in this one area. And unless your fencing and everything is basically like Fort Knox, something's eventually gonna get in there. I mean, you could have garter snakes going down to the nest and eating the babies. Nature's tough, and again, every dead baby, every collapsed burrow that happens where a whole, you lose a whole litter that's four weeks old, that's wasted feed, that's wasted time, that's wasted resources, which again, I can't see as being very sustainable. And finally, for me and other professional breeders, and this is a biggie, there's a lack of control, especially if you're keeping males with females, and I would strongly recommend, regardless of how you feel about the colony, raising of rabbits, you do not buy breeding stock from colony raised rabbits. And that's because breeding animals requires a certain amount of control and it requires a certain amount of knowledge. Again, if you let nature take its course, you would not get a gigantic meat rabbit. You would get something that's much more primed for survival in the wild, but much less primed for being tasty food for humans. And much less primed for being of an efficient user of inputs, which again is hugely important. And that's one of rabbits main advantages is, is that they use food very efficiently. And that's what makes them sustainable. But again, that's not necessarily gonna happen in a colony situation. And you have no way of knowing because you've taken yourself completely out of the, uh, the equation. And even if you are totally for mob breeding, you know, if you don't know what that is, there's some information on it. It's used with larger herds of livestock. Even the most regenerative, organic, naturally raised breeder of cows or pigs or sheep who's doing mob breeding, they never keep the males and the females together indefinitely. They may introduce the males and the females at certain times, but they are rigorously breeding and culling like crazy, which is extremely difficult to do with rabbits because they are much harder to handle than cows and sheep. You're not gonna know where half of them are. If they're digging burrows, you're not gonna be able to get access to them, and you're not gonna have a good idea of where your herd's genetics is going. And I think it's really, really important to at least, you know, if you're gonna breed animals, you need to be the captain of the ship. I'm not saying you have to go down to the finest detail, but you need to know what's going on there, and I don't think you can offer customers a, a reputable product, a reputable breeding stock, if you don't have detailed genetic knowledge about each one of your rabbits. You know, in a colony, you're not going to be able to see each one of your rabbits by itself and you know, assess it objectively, unless you have very few rabbits, which again, this doesn't really apply. You know, if you have two or three rabbits, you can do whatever you want. But if you're serious about raising rabbits, I just see a lot of flaws with this method. Now, Am I saying that everybody should immediately just switch to cages and you know we all should go to factory farming them like we do chickens? No, but I also think that there's a stigma associated with cages, especially among sustainability-minded folks. You know, we think cage, we think bad. Um, where I, whereas I think rabbits in particular are very well suited to cage growing. You know, they don't travel far in the wild. They're mostly live. They spend most of their lives underground in confined spaces. You know, so they're very comfortable with that. And if you let them out, you'll see them express a lot more stuff, which is why I'm a big advocate of the hybrid model. If your breeders, your babies, you know, they should be at the very least in a controlled environment. If you want to do tractors, I think that's fantastic. I highly recommend that. Um, but again, the theme of everything I'm trying to get at here is we're optimizing for efficiency, which means sustainability, while trying to balance the needs of ethics and we're also maintaining the human control factor, which again, maybe rubs some people in the sustainability community the wrong way, but when you take on raising animals, you're taking on that responsibility. You are nature. You're taking over the role of nature. So I think you owe it to your herd, you owe it to your customers, if you're selling breeding stock, and you owe it to the planet to try to be as an efficient and intelligent breeder as possible. So. With all that being said, I don't want to kibosh anybody's hopes and dreams. If you already have a colony, you're probably going to take this with a grain of salt anyways. Uh, I'm more speaking to people who are looking at colonies. And if you decide you want to try a colony, I'm not the kind of person who's going to discourage you. And hell, there are ways to refine things. I think a lot of people are doing really interesting stuff in hot climates with underground burrows. Not necessarily colonies, but sometimes in colonies. You know, there, there's definitely room for innovation. But I would strongly recommend the beginner starts out in the tried and true area 
and then branches out from there. You know, again, a lot of the modern homesteading movement, especially on YouTube, is wrapped up in this, you know, romantic thing where it's like, oh, we're gonna jet off and be on this happy little little house on the prairie farm. And the reality is very different. And, you know, I, I'd hate to see somebody start in rabbits and then have a rabbit ripped to pieces in their colony because they got into a fight or a collapsed burrow destroying the mom and the babies and just say, you know what, rabbits isn't for me. I've never lost a rabbit you know, in a cage from something like that. I've never lost a rabbit from serious disease in a cage. And when you introduce a colony, you introduce more variables. And it's much harder for the beginner to know what went wrong. Was this a breeding thing? Was this a disease thing? Was it genetic? The list goes on. So I recommend starting simple, starting with tried and true, where we have a lot of information. And then if you want to branch out from there, go ahead. So um, I hope I didn't offend anybody. I know, again, like I said, this is a controversial topic. People are very touchy about this. Um, and I try to be honest, I'm not coming from a homesteader's perspective. I'm coming from a rabbit breeder's perspective. Um, I'd probably be more closer to a rabbit farmer than a homesteader. That being said, my biggest customers are homesteaders and backyard meat rabbit people. And I primarily made this channel so I didn't have to constantly explain these things to people when I was selling rabbits. So take my information with a grain of salt. But yeah, those are just my problems that I have with the, uh, the colony setup. I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't think it's the worst thing to ever happen to rabbits. It's certainly better than some of the alternatives, but I don't necessarily think it's something that the majority of people should be going to. And I definitely don't think it's something that beginners should be looking into. But uh, yeah, on that note, I'm gonna cut it off here. I hope you guys at least found this video thought provoking um, and give you something to chew on. If you, you know, did find it somewhat useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.